Today, I will be talking about the development and regulation of drugs. We will be talking about development and regulation of drugs. So, the most common first steps in the development of a new drug are the discovery or synthesis of a potential new drug compound or the elucidation of a new drug target. When a new drug molecule is synthesized or discovered, subsequent steps seek an understanding of the drug's interactions with its biologic targets. <clears throat> Repeated application of this approach leads to compounds with increased efficacy, potency, and selectivity. So the development and testing requ process required to bring a drug to mo the market in USA some of the requirements may be different from for drugs used in life-threatening diseases like this one so in the pharmaceutical industry careful analysis indicates that a majority of a new drugs originate in research carried out in public sector institutions examples are universities and research institutes so However, because of the economic investment required and the need to efficiently access and integrate multiple technologies, most new drugs are then developed in pharmaceutical companies because the cost of research and everything is too expensive. Therefore, it will be only developed in pharmaceutical companies. So enormous and increasing costs with estimates of $150 million to several billion are involved in the development of a single new drug that reaches the marketplace. In spite of the cost of development, the financial rewards in drug development can be enormous. So it depends, but most likely the cost is very expensive. So, drug discovery. Most new drug products are discovered or developed through the following approaches. First is the identification or elucidation of a new drug target. Rational design of a new molecule based on an understanding of biologic mechanisms and drug receptor structure. Screening for biologic activity of large numbers of natural products, banks of previously discovered chemical entities, or large libraries of peptides, nucleic acids, and other organic molecules. And the fourth is that Chemical modification of a known active molecule resulting in a Me Too analog. So, steps 1 and 2 are often carried out in academic research laboratories. But the cost of steps 3 and 4 usually ensures that industry carries. So once a new drug target or promising molecule has been identified, the process of moving from the basic science laboratory to the clinic begins. So in drug screening, regardless of the source or the key idea leading to a drug candidate molecule, testing it involves a sequence of experimentation and characterization called drug screening. So the type and number of initial screening tests depend on the pharmacologic and therapeutic goal. The, the molecule will also be studied for a broad array of other actions to determine the mechanism of action and selectivity of the drug. So this can reveal both expected and unexpected toxic effects. So studies are performed during drug screening to define the pharmacologic profile of the drug at the mole molecular, cellular, organ, system, and organism levels. So the preclinical safety and toxicity testing, all drugs are toxic in some individuals at some dose because everyone, every individual has a different um, tolerance in some drugs. So, seeking to correctly define the limiting toxicities of drugs in the therapeutic index, comparing benefits and risk of a new drug is an essential part of the new drug development process. So, the goals of preclinical toxicity studies include identifying potential human toxicities, designing tests to further define toxic mechanisms, predicting the most relevant toxicities to be monitored in clinical trials. So, here are the safety tests. Um, this one, I will, uh, the table speaks for itself. So, acute toxicity, so two species, two roots. Uh, subacute or subchronic toxicity, three doses, two species. 
chronic toxicity is when drug is intended to be used in humans for prolonged periods. Effect on reproductive performance, two species, usually one rodent and one rabbit. So, one rabbit and rabbits, whatever. So, carcinogenic potential, two years, two species. So, in mutagenic potential, so um, mammalian cells in culture or mutations in bacteria. Um, sorry. Uh, next is the important, it is important to recognize the limitations of preclinical testing. So these include the following. Toxicity testing is time consuming and expensive. So two to six years may be required to collect and analyze data on toxicity before a drug can be considered ready for testing in humans. So, large numbers of animals may be needed to obtain valid preclinical science data. So, the third is extrapolations of therapeutic index and toxicity data from animals to humans are reasonably predictive for many but not for all toxicities. So, for statistical reasons, rare adverse effects are unlikely to be detected in preclinical testing. So, evaluation in humans. So, after the pre-clinical testing, there will be evaluation in humans. So, less than one-third of the drugs tested in clinical trials reach the marketplace. So, federal law in the USA and ethical considerations require that the study of new drugs in humans be conducted in accordance with stringent guidelines. So they need the need for careful design and execution is based on three major confounding factors inherent in the study of drug in any humans. So confounding factors in clinical trials. Um the first is the variable natural history of most diseases. So many diseases tend to wax and wane in severity. Some disappear spontaneously, even on occasion cancer. A good experimental design takes into account the natural history of the disease by evaluating a large enough population of subjects over a sufficient period of time. So next, the presence of other diseases and risk factors. Known and unknown diseases and risk factors may influence the results of a clinical study. Other drugs and some foods alter the pharmacokinetics of many drugs. Concentrations of blood or tissue components being monitored as a measure of the effect of the new agent may be influenced by other diseases or other drugs. So the, the last is the subject and observer bias and other factors. Most patients tend to respond in a positive way to any therapeutic intervention by interested, caring, and enthusiastic sorry, medical personnel. The placebo response is usually quantitated by administration of an inert material with exactly the same physical appearance, odor, consi consistency, and etc. as the active dosage form. So the Food and Drug Administration. The FDA is the administrative body that oversee, oversees the drug evaluation process in the USA and grants approval for marketing of new new drug products. Uh, FDA is all around the world, by the way. So to receive FDA approval for marketing, the originating institution or company, almost always the latter, so company, must submit evidence of safety and effectiveness. Out to the USA, the regulatory and drug approval process is generally similar to that in the USA. So there's some major legislations pertaining to drugs in the United States. So as you can see at the table there. So clinical trials, the IND and DNA. Once the new drug is judged ready to be studied in humans, a notice claimed a notice of claimed inve investigational exemption for a new drug or IND must be filed with the FDA. The IND includes information on the composition and source of the drug, chemical and manufacturing information, all data from animal studies, 
proposed plans and clinical trials, the names and credentials of the physicians who will conduct the clinical trials, and a compi compilation of the key data relevant to study the drug in humans that has been made available to investigators and their institutional review boards. It often requires four to six years of clinical testing to accumulate and analyze all required data. In phase one, the effects of drug as function of dosage are established in the small number 20 to 100 healthy volunteers. In phase two, the drug is studied in patients with target disease to determine its efficacy or proof of concept and the doses to be used in follow trials. The third phase, the drug is evaluated in a much larger number of patients with target disease, usually thousands of them, to further establish and confirm safety and efficacy. Once approval to the market, a drug has been obtained phase 4, so the phase 4 begins, which constitutes monitoring the safety of the new drug under actual conditions of use in large numbers of patients. So conflicts of interest. So, several factors in the development and marketing of drugs result in conflicts of interest. Use of pharmaceutical industry funding to support FDA approval processes raises the possibility of conflicts in, of interest within the FDA. Supporters of this policy point out that chronic FDA underfunding by the government allows for few alternatives. So traditional translational research rather, unfortunately, the rate of introduction of new drugs has fallen during the last two decades. So this has raised concerns about our ab ability to deal with the increasing prevalence of resistant microorganisms and the problems of degenerative diseases in an aging population. So adverse drug reactions and adverse drug event or ADE or reaction to a drug ADR is a harmful unintended response. Adverse drug reactions are claimed to be fourth, the fourth leading cause of death, higher than pulmonary diseases, AIDS, accidents, and automobile deaths. So orphan drugs and treatment of rare diseases. Drugs for rare diseases, so-called orphan drugs, can be difficult to research, develop, and market. Proof of drug safety and efficacy in small populations must be established, but doing so is a complex process. Furthermore, because basic research in the pathophysiology and mechanisms of rare diseases receives relatively little attention or funding in both academic and industrial settings, recognize rational targets for drug action. For drug action, sorry for the words. So that is the end of my report. Thank you.